just a smidge under the 6,000 pound mark. A overall pretty nice 2604 WS Rockwood Ultralight just came in on trade here. And I tell you, the owner of this RV had some pretty exquisite taste. Because first of all, Rockwood is not a base level, entry level brand. This is a, I've often said that I relate Rockwood with retirement grade. Well, he took it a step further and swapped this out for a full body paint, all kinds of solar, triple air conditioner, uh, Jayco Pinnacle luxury fifth wheel. So this was a person that that liked nice things. It's not in perfect shape, but it's... I'm gonna to have to really look pretty hard to show you any blemishes on this. And actually, we're going to start there, and then we're gonna start looking at all the goodness on this one. This is an awesome fit for something like a, a solo camper or a couple looking for a half-ton tower right here. Now, I always try to approach looking at a used RV as though I were buying it. So the first thing that I always look for, and the first thing I always wanna point out, what are the dings? What are the blemishes? What are those scary things that might be deal breaker stuff? And on this RV, there's only one little spot uh, that I feel I need to note for you because overall, it looks pretty good in here. And that is over here by the dinette. It looks like maybe at some point, the back paneling on this might have popped off. I see that got kind of screwed down there, which obviously it's doing a heck of a job. So that's probably an enhancement. Um, down here, there's a couple little scuffs and bumps on the face of this. And I don't know if somebody's foot hit that or if cargo shifted, but there is a little crack in that faceplate right there. Uh, just the, the fascia luon, as it were. And then over here, the previous owner installed their own little household outlet right there. It's even got a couple USB plugs. It's really nice, but they didn't use a really heavy grade of cord on that. So if you're just going to use it to, you know, charge up phones and stuff, that's probably fine. But... I wouldn't use that with like an electric space heater or anything that really sucks a lot of juice just because it's got a, a real thin grade of, of cord that's plugging it into the wall effectively. And I think pretty much any reasonable person can agree that's some pretty minor stuff. I went out of my way to point that out. Hope you appreciate the transparency. That's the kind of stuff that a lot of people will go shopping, walking around looking for campers. And especially with that table sitting there, you never would have even noticed it. That's the kind of extra detail we're going to here. That's the kind of stuff I had to go looking for. Now, this is under 30 feet. It still has a nice couple pair of rocking chairs. Notice how they kind of overlap with the slide fascia a little bit, though. So that right-hand rocking chair, you will need to pull that over in front of the door for travel mode. But between the two entry doors, you can get through this RV in transit. Over here, we've got a little bit older style, actually, like air bed, uh, hide a bed. And my experience with those is they weren't great when they were brand new. The, the sofa's fine. It's just that they were really crappy grades of air mattresses. If that is something you're looking for as a secondary sleeping space, spend 20 bucks on Amazon or say, hey, I'll buy it if you guys can get me an air bed. You know, we'll, we'll take a look at that. That's not a major deal. I don't think we're going to argue with you over something silly like that. Um, you know, that's, that's something that we can get shipped like right to your house. Oh, one other little blemish I noticed is that this lens cap cover over that LED light, uh, watch your eyes, was uh, gone. So just one lens cap. I don't know if something hit it. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what might have caused that, but I see all the original electronics are here. Uh, you notice up in the ceiling, your central area unit actually has double ducting and every single vent in this can open and close individually so you can really get the airflow when and where you want it. I noticed too the previous owner uh, put a heavier duty, um, what do I want to say, battery disconnect switch in here. That's that silver switch in the upper right there. It's more of a uh, heavy duty kind of grade. My guess is the other style was a push plunger type. I would guess that maybe somebody bumped it a time or two while trying to get into that uh, uh, refrigerator there and caused a bit of an issue. Now, I want to get all the storage opened up. We're going to start up here overhead. And, uh, you know, the I mean, the, the microwave, the refrigerator, all this stuff looks good. It's not all molded up and yucky crap burned into it. The oven doesn't look like it was very commonly used, which is very normal for RV appliances. See the solid surface kitchens, right? Uh, kitchen countertop, as it were. But notice that big peninsula style overhead cabinet. Uh, it actually passes through to uh, the other side, which is something very few RVs don't do nowadays. Similarly, the overhead storage, not just above the rear area, but also the entire super slide is something almost no RV brands do anymore. 
We already saw the little, uh, you know, flip floating table down there, but notice how there's also easy reach storage below that dinette. Uh, you don't have to go digging for the storage in this, which is an awful nice thing. From there, we just jump through that door and we're in the bathroom. Actually, I wonder, did this door hit that light? No, I have no idea how that, that could have ever been cracked. Ha, huh. eh, I don't know. Anyway, something happened, I'm not sure. At least you guys know about it before you show up, right? Uh, the bathroom is a very traditional walkthrough middle bathroom, uh, you know, for a rear living room arrangement. It's a very space effective design. Now with Rockwood's vaulted ceiling and their laminated roofing, it allows them to place the skylights exactly where they want. So even though the sidewalls of this are only six and a half foot tall, which would be a bit of a problem for somebody like me when I step up into the shower, the overall height uh, in the shower is definitely still sufficient where I can stand up without like feeling claustrophobic or feeling like I'm banging my head in place. That's pretty fluffy friendly overall right there with some decent leg room and you see the pocket sliding door up to the master bedroom. That is a 60 by 74 camp queen, a short queen. But if you notice, there's more than enough room in here. You can put a true queen in and still walk around the bed. So we're under 30 feet, super slide, bedroom closet slide, and we are still true queen capable, albeit there is not a true queen in it at uh, you know this time, nor was there from the factory. I think that's actually the original factory bed, now that I say it. You do again have that uh, direct entry door from the exterior. It does deadbolt for security's sake. Nice little spot over here too, if you have like a little dog kennel, maybe little, I don't know, some people have cat litter boxes, things like that. I'd prefer to keep that off of carpet, but this is made back when you just still saw more carpet in the industry, uh, unlike now, you know. Now this has a front window, as opposed to today's Rockwoods have a front wind shield, which is a heavier grade of glass, but notice it does have that fold down weather shield outside to keep it protected. It also has day night shades on the inside, so you can maintain light and or privacy. And just like we did in the kitchen, I want to open this all up, start showing you around all the storage here in the bedroom. It is a little bit of an asymmetrical design. You've got the full length hanging closet on one side, a wide open side stand on the other, which seems odd until you see the fact that this has that, uh, you know, full like closet and dresser storage in the slide. Not to mention all the storage that is under the bed here. You've got the dresser drawers, the kind of storage trunk on top. That's basically something Rockwood still does today. They have a very cool bedroom storage arrangement. Actually, I see other people aftermarket DIY their non-Rockwood campers to meet what Rockwood's kind of doing here. Now, I don't know if I would actually call this next thing a blemish or just, a, just one of them things. Previous owner had weight distribution and anti-sway bars. I see the ball mount for an old style friction anti-sway still here. And it looks like they did a little homebrew cutaway job on the propane cover there just to make that, uh, you know, not fight, not, not you know, infighting for space right there. I guess it's, it's modified. I don't really know that it's a problem, but, you know, I feel like I want to point that stuff out because that's the kind of thing that if it were me and I showed up and I got kind of surprised with that, I'd, I get weird heebie-jeebie feelings off that. What gives me good feelings though is when I see original factory equipment like that outside grill and, and little table there, that thing mounts under this extremely long awning. And what I love about that awning is how nicely it clears both entry doors. So like I'm dodging raindrops right now. I got lucky enough to try to record this one when it wasn't raining. Although when I was inside, it actually was raining. I'm just getting real lucky here. Must be cashing in some karma points. Um, on a rainy day like this, Sometimes you get a little stir crazy. You want to spend a little time outside. Being able to go in and out of both doors, kind of nice, kind of really nice actually. The underbelly is enclosed. This was made before 12 volt tank heaters were standard right here. If you look up top, you see that fantastic fan vent cover, uh, something like that, basically still used by Rockwood today. And look on the bottom left corner of that big super slide there, you see a, a, an access door that actually goes under one of the uh, the dinette benches. So once again, you don't have to tear apart the dinette to get to it. This has an all aluminum skeleton. This is made to be light and long lasting. And again, that's why I've often relayed, uh, related Rockwood to retirement grade. If you look at how their RVs hold up over time, even sometimes when they weren't well kept, like this one's been pretty decently kept, I think. I don't think a uh, previous owner has anything to hang their head about here. Uh, you know, they used it. It shows some signs of use, but it certainly ain't beat up. The RV is holding up very nicely. Now, I'd prefer to get you up on the roof, unfortunately, with it being a little wet right now. Not exactly the safest thing. I don't want to slip slide around there. So I'm just going to see if I can, I don't know, 
uh, put my camera on the end of a broom and wave it around up there real quick. Let's see what we get. So there you go. Ho uh, hopefully that turns out well. I have no idea. I couldn't exactly see the screen on my camera while I was doing it, but you know, I tried. Uh, an attempt was made. <laughs> So when you're ready to go camping, give us a call. Hitches, pieces, parts, trades, financing, we do it all. <laughs> that had a uh, that had a good ring. Look at this. We've already got we've already got people scoping this thing out. I stepped away for five seconds to get a drink of some water, and uh, we've already got folks crawling all over the thing. That is not a surprise the way things have been going this year. So, like I said, if you need financing, you need hitching, you need anything, you, you want to trade something out like these folks did, obviously we do it. Until then, we look forward to hearing from you. Take care, stay safe, have fun. And happy Halo Camp and everyone.